Okay, so um, today it's a, a special edition of the office hour. So I'm going to present a Slitter, a static analyzer. So we're going to see uh, what is Slitter, what you can do with Slitter, um, how Slitter works, and what are like the uh, one map for, for the tool. So Slitter is a static analysis framework for Solidity. It allows uh, many applications from the detection of vulnerability to the detection of optimization um, to help you to understand and to review a Solidity code base. So it's open source, um, it's on uh, GitHub, and um, for the installation, it requires almost no dependency. So it's pretty uh, simple to install with Pipe. So um, as a quick overview of what Slitter does, so it's a framework to perform static analysis. It takes a smart contract and the IST representation generated by the compiler. And from this, it performs uh, various um, analysis on top of this IST. It will first recover a lot of information. What are the contract? What are the function? What are the control flow graph of each function? It will convert um, the Solidity expression to its own intermediate representation, which is called Slitter. We're going to see more in detail what is this intermediate representation later in this talk. And finally, it will perform um, code analysis directly on top of the intermediate representation, such as, such as uh, data dependency or detection of what functions are protected and so on. And from all this information, which is recovered by the core of Slitter, Many applications are built on top of, for example, other vulnerability detection, the optimization detection, the kind of understanding, and you can also build uh, any kind of application on top of uh, Slitter because it's built as a, a generic framework to perform static analysis. So the first um, usage of Slitter is to detect bug and vulnerability. We have more than uh, 20 public vulnerability detector on our uh, public database from uh, really simple vulnerability to more critical one. So we can detect a simple issue like uh, issue in the naming convention or a more critical vulnerability like the one twenty detection or the shadowing of variable or this kind of uh, issue. So if you want um, like if, if you have a code and you want a slitter directly on this code, it will find like issue if there are any issue within a second uh, in this code base. So here you have just an issue because one uh, address is never initialized and you transfer ether to this address. So you transfer ether to the address zero and slitter is able to find uh, this bug. So, um, we have, as I said, something like 20, even more no public detector. So you have the full list here. And we also have um, other detectors which are private and are for uh, previous clients. So which include waste condition or integral overflow, this kind of uh, vulnerability. So as I said, um, Slitter is able to analyze the code base within a second. The detector has have like a, a low number of false alarm. For a developer, it's really easy to integrate Slitter into the pipeline. Um, we have an output in JSON, and we have Truffle and Remix support, and it's uh, highly customizable. So if you have a specific kind of vulnerability you want to detect in your code base, it's pretty straightforward to add a new detector to Slitter and to integrate everything into your uh, continuous integration system. So in addition to detect uh, bug and vulnerability. You can also detect optimization that are missed by the compiler. For example, um, if you have a state variable which is never written and it's always the same value, uh, you can optimize it by declaring the variable as constant. So Slitter can detect this kind of uh, potential constant variable uh, like within a second, it's the same as the vulnerability detector and other kind of optimization, like the functions that could be declared as external function. We have uh, what we call printers, which are uh, kind of visual representation of uh, the code base. So you can take a contract 
and you can extract information from this contract and represent this inf information in different way. We have many uh, graph-based representation, which show, for example, uh, the inheritance graph or the call graph of the, of the program. We have many printers that show a summary of the contracts, for example, what are the access control of the contract, what is the code complexity, or like if you have a, a token and you want to have a quick information about the token, uh, Slitter is able to give you, for example, the mining restriction of the token. All of these printers are open source and you will have the documentation on this link. So just to give you an example of printer, if you have this um, code base with three contracts, um, you can use the inheritance graph to have a quick overview of what are the dependency between each function and what function are um, override from, from another contract. Additionally, uh, as I said, um, the framework is built as a library, so you have a full uh, Python IPR script to take all the information from Slitter and to build any kind of tool or, or script. For example, uh, if you know that inside your code base, uh, some, some specific variable should never be uh, controlled by the user, you can, in a few lines of code, uh, check it with Slitter. Uh, you can like print directly what are all the functions that can modify a state variable and so on. So if you have like custom property you want to check on your code base, you can use uh, the API to, to check it. So I'm going to um, go a bit more in detail on how Slitter works. So as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, Slitter will take the AST from the compiler and we'll uh, recover a lot of information from this IST. So it will use what is called uh, a refinement parsing, where basically it will um, parse the IST in multiple stages, where each stage or each layer add a new kind of information. So at first, we will recover what are the contract, what are the inheritance of the contract, what are the function of the contract, and so. Then for each function, we will uh, recover what are the attributes, what, what are the control flow graph, and so on. And each time we we um, pass a new a new layer, we add more information. At the end, uh, we have all the information of the contract, the function, the node, and the expression, and the solidity expression. And then we convert this, this solidity expression to our intermediate representation, which is a Slitter. So from all this information, Slitter will perform different uh, code analysis. For example, it will allow to give you um, all the information about the width and the write of all the variable at different levels. So you can know if uh, state variable is written by a specific function, by a specific contract, or within a specific node of the function. You will know um, what function are protected, so what function need an ownership to, uh, to, to be executed. And finally, we have a lot of uh, data dependency information. So the data dependency allows you to know if two variables, uh, if one variable can influence the value of another one. So it's kind of related also to the tent analysis, so we can know if um, one variable can be controlled by the user. So as I mentioned, we have our own intermediate representation. If you are uh, not familiar with compilation, usually with when people uh, write a compiler nowadays, they write also an intermediate representation which is used within the compiler. So the idea is that high level language like Solidity, C, Go, or, or whatever language are meant for humans. They are meant for expressiveness. They are meant to be like understand, uh, can be understanding by human. What we want to perform static analysis is a language which makes sense to be analyzed. That's why we transform uh, the Solidity, which is a high level uh, representation to something which is more suitable for code analysis. So uh, our intermediate representation uh, has not a lot of instruction. It's what we call a linear intermediate representation because there is no um, branching condition inside, inside the representation. Everything is based on the CFG from Slitter. We perform a lot of 
code transformation and content simplification from Solidity. For example, in Solidity, you have this uh, ternary operator and we convert the ternary operator to a set of if then else. So to give you uh, a quick overview of what looks like uh, the internet representation. So we have a binary and an array operator. We have a index and member operator for mapping and structure. We have new operator. So for example, here you can see that um, if you look at the grammar from Solidity, when you create a new structure, it's a call to the structure. So instead of having this call to a structure in Solidity, which is a bit weird to analyze for, for a static analyzer, we convert this to this new structure operator, which allows allow us to have a better understanding of on the code. So um, if you have this uh, Solidity expression, which is a mapping, an access to a mapping of a mapping and a subtraction to this uh, to this access, in the intermediate representation, it will be three uh, operation. Uh, the 2D referencing and, and so on. So the intermediate representation kind of follow what is called the three slash four code address form where uh, you have an operator and a set of variable. It's a, um, it's a flat uh, representation. You don't have nested operation, which makes uh, the build of static analysis uh, a lot easier than our solidity. In addition, um, we have what is called SSA, so it's a static single assignment, which means that we have a specific um, property in our intermediate representation, which allow us to quickly and precisely build data dependency. As I said, data dependency has these techniques which allow to know if two variable, if one variable can influence the value of another one. It's something really uh, common in uh, compilation and program analysis technique. We also have an alias analysis uh, on storage reference. As you probably know, uh, you can have a local variable which points to a, a state variable using storage reference in Solidity. So one local variable can potentially point to many uh, state variable. And if you want to be able to analyze complex code base, you need to have this alias analysis, which allows you to know uh, what are all the possible state variables that are uh, pointed by uh, this uh, storage reference. So um, what we want to, to, to do in the next uh, weeks slash months for Slitter, first, we are going to continue to work on our detector. So we are going to open source uh, more detector and to cover most more uh, type of vulnerability. We are going to, to continue to work on the developer integration. For example, uh, we have uh, ongoing work on a Visual, Stu Visual Studio plugin. We also are considering to extend uh, the framework for a new language. Uh, Viper is one of the candidates. We are going to continue also to work on improving the internet representation. And in particular, we are interested to see how we can use this intermediate representation to uh, perform more formal method analysis, like symbolic computation or abstract interpretation. And we already have uh, proof of concept for all of this technique using our intermediate representation. So as I said, Slitter is really straightforward to use. Um, you don't need any background in static analysis if you just, uh, as a developer, you want to use it and check your code. Um, everything is open source. We give Bounty for a meaningful contribution. And if you need help about the tool or if you have any question, feel free to join our, on our Slack and ask uh, any question. And that's it.